Hello everyone. So today we're going to be discussing the problem reverse an array. Okay, so this is the first problem in the section of array in the 450 lower bar sheet. Okay, so let's get to the problem. So the problem is that we are going to be given an input array which can have integers or characters or any other data type. And what we have to do is we have to reverse the elements which are present in the given array. So here I have taken an example where I have taken five elements which are from one to five in the input array. What we have to do is we have to reverse this array. That means the element which are present in the end of the array will come in the beginning. So after reversing five comes here, four comes here and just like that we are going to reverse the array. So this is going to be the input and this is going to be the output. So this is the problem we have to solve. So now let's look at the first approach to solve this problem. Here we're going to use an extra array, which is of the same size of the input array. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to use traversal in both of the array simultaneously. Okay. So let me explain that. So what we're going to do is our one iterator will move from right side towards the left side in the input array and our second iterator will move from left side towards the right side in our extra array which we are using and the logic is we'll start copying the elements from the first input array to our extra memory so that is the basic approach to solve this problem okay so let's see how we're going to be doing it so i have taken one iterator i at this position and j at this position. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be copying array of i element to a new array which I have named as extra array like this. So that's how we'll copy the values and after that because I am going to move my i iterator towards the previous position so I'll have to do i minus minus and I, as I'm moving J to the next position, so let me copy it first and we'll move our J to the next position. So for that, we'll have to do J plus plus. And this task will go in a loop. Okay. So again, we'll do extra of J, we'll copy array of I. So four will come to this position. After that, we'll move I to the previous position and J to the next position then we'll copy three here then we'll move i to the previous position j to the next position then again we'll copy the value then again we'll move j to the next position i to the previous position here now when will we stop we'll stop when i goes out of bounds that means it goes out of the array so we'll do this task while i is greater than minus one. So this is the approach that we're going to be following to solve this problem. And in the end, I will go out of bounds and J will also go out of bounds. So this is the approach that we can use to solve this problem. Now let's discuss the time complexity and space complexity for this approach. So as we can see, we have done only a single traversal of the whole array. And if we consider if there are total number of N elements, in the array then as we are doing a single traversal the time complexity will be order of n also we are using extra memory which has the same size as the given array so the space complexity is also order of n okay so the problem in this approach is that we are using extra space but this problem can be solved in constant space time so let's look at this approach now Okay, so this approach is called a two pointer approach. And this is a very famous approach. And this can be used to solve a lot of problems. So what we do is we are we use two pointers, we place the pointers one pointer, let's say I'm calling that pointer start pointer in the starting position of the array and end pointer in the ending position of the array. Now, here, the problem is that we want to reverse the array. So if you see it, 
what we are trying to do is we are putting our element from the last position to the first position and the first position element is going to the last position so we are kind of swapping the element so for that what we going to what we can use is we can use a swap function and we can swap the values which are present at start position and end position so after swapping 5 will come to this position and 1 will come to this position now what we have to do is we have to move our start pointer to the next position and our end pointer to the previous position so what we what we are doing is we are doing start plus plus and end minus minus and again we are swapping the value so again we are doing this in a loop so that's why again we what we're going to do is we're going to swap the values so 4 is going to come here 2 is going to come here then again we're going to move our start and end pointer so start is coming here and end pointer is coming here both the pointers are pointing to the same position now does it make sense to swap the values at the same position it does not that means we have to stop our loop when start or end are at the same position or start goes beyond the end position that means we'll keep doing this task when start is lesser than the end pointer and in the end we got a reversal of the array so this is the two pointer approach so now let's discuss the time complexity in the space complexity for the two pointer approach here as we can see we have moved a start pointer from this position till this position so it makes we are going to move half of the array that is we are traversing n by 2 elements at max so that means the time complexity is order of n by 2 if i am considering there are total number of n elements in the array and order of n by 2 is equals to order of n only now let's see are we using any extra space so we are using uh, various variables start and and all that but all of them are not making our space getting increased with the increase in the size of input array so that means a space complexity is constant okay so this is the optimal approach to solve this problem so many times what happens is reversing an array is just a sub part of a bigger problem and there you don't have to write the code from scratch what you can do is you can use directly the reverse function which is already present in the standard library of c++ but how can we use it so as we know we have an array so there is a starting point in the array and there is a ending point in the array so what you have to give in the reverse function is the address of starting point and you have to give the address of the point which is just next to the ending point so these are the two position that you have to provide in the reverse function so as you can see if i have an array simple array like this what i have given is i have given the starting address and the address which is next to the ending point and if you are dealing with vectors what you have to do is you can use begin and end function which gives you the begin pointer and the end pointer to reverse the array so this is the third thing that you can use to reverse the array okay so let's look at the code now so as you can see i have taken the input on this side uh, so basically 5 is nothing but the size of the array and these are the five values in the array and what i have done is i have taken the size variable i have taken the size value into the variable then i have created the array of that size and initially here the values will be garbage values so i have just looped over the values and i have taken them one by one into my array that i have created here now let's get to the two pointer approach so 
So in the two pointer approach, the most important things are the two pointers that is the start and the end, which will be pointing to the starting location and the ending location of the array. And the second most important thing is to swap the elements. Okay, so let's write the loop because we'll have to traverse the array. And for traversing that, we need the two variables, the two pointers. The so one will be start, which will be pointing to the first location, second one is pointing to the last location. Then inside, first of all, we're going to swap the values that are present at the start position and at the end position. After swapping the values, the second thing we need to do is we need to move the pointers. So start will move to the next position. So start plus plus and we'll end will move to the previous position. So end minus minus. Now, when are we going to stop the loop? So we're going to stop the loop when start becomes greater than or equal to the end position. So that means this loop, this particular loop should run till start is lesser than end. Now this snippet of code is simply printing all the values that are present in the array. That's it. So now let's run the code and see if it is traversing our given array or not. It is saying here that the code compiled successfully and we can see that it has reversed the array. Also, as we have not hard coded our input, we can simply change our input to some other values. So let's say this time only four values, one, two, four, five, and let's reverse that also. Yeah, so it's reversing that one also and the code compiled successfully. Now, I've already discussed about one more thing here. That is, we don't need to even write these lines of code to reverse an array. We can directly use the inbuilt function, which is already present. That is the reverse function. Here, we have to simply give the starting address and the address just after the last location in the array. And that will reverse the given array. But to use this function we need to remember that we need to include a library because the, the function implementation is present in this library so that's why we need to include this library to use this function let's run that and we can see that it is reversing the array and you can see i've already commented the previous code and the reverse reversal is happening using this reverse function Thank you so much for watching this video. If you really like this explanation, please consider subscribing and hit that like button. See you in the next video. Thank you.